Hey everyone, today is a beautiful day in northern New Hampshire. We are coming today to hike a mountain. We are today going to Welsh Dickey. There's a sign if you want to look at it. Welsh Dickey. We're going to be climbing this today. This is one of my favorite hikes. It's not one of the hardest and it's also not one of the easiest ones to do. It looks like we have a good amount of people today. Big pothole back there. Yeah, there's a lot more people than when I last did this. I actually climbed this mountain maybe three weeks ago. I was bored, drove up here. It's about two hours from my house. Yeah, last time it was not overflowing off the paved area. No, it was not. So this mountain is unique compared to basically all the other mountains in the area. The top of it is flat in a lot of spots. It's like concrete. It's one gigantic slab of rock which makes me find it extremely interesting. Right in front of me, they require you to pay $5 unless you have the National Forest Service pass. If you do a lot of hiking, it'd probably be worth it for you to do that. So at these hiking trails, the way that works is if there is a toilet that, that they have to take care of, like over here, there's gonna be a pay station. If there is no toilet, there typically will not be a pay station. Now, if you go over there and you find out that there are absolutely no envelopes left for you to fill out and put a $5 bill in, that's okay. The park ranger should see that there are no more left. And even if you don't do it properly, they're not going to give you a ticket, so don't worry about that. I have someone in my family who works for the National Forest Service, and they told me, if you don't pay, the park ranger will just put a ticket on your car. And it's not even a ticket, it's just a thing asking you to please send in the money. And they'll put those on any car that they found didn't pay. It's not even a ticket, it's just something where they're asking you to please pay for it. And you just send it out. And I got a pen at the car, I gotta go look at my license plate and everything and hang part of it on the car that gets ripped off. Alrighty, here we go up the trail. So, what we're doing today is we're doing the loop, which is 4.4 miles. The trail starts off pretty nice and easily. As you see, just walking through the woods but eventually we'll get up above the tree line. This mountain isn't tall enough to be where there's absolutely no trees and just grass like the times we've done Mount Washington. But I do find this to be one of my favorite hikes, probably my favorite hike, along with Huntington Ravine. I'll probably do that again, maybe this fall, thinking about it. Got a beautiful water crossing here coming up. And I'll show you guys anything exciting we find on the way. So this hike, they say it takes the average person about four hours to do it. Last time I did it, I think it took about two and a half. Could have done it faster, I could have done it slower. But the pace I go at, we'll probably get this done in about two and a half hours today. I love all these water bars they make so it doesn't erode the trail when it pours out a lot. And you can tell by the size of the trail, during the peak of tourist season, there's going to be a lot of people here. Today there's actually a surprising amount here today. Today's August 22nd. Beautiful sunny day. That's why I'm coming up here to look at the view from the top. There's not many days you get actual clear skies this year because of all the wildfire smoke blowing in from Canada for the past like all summer and a lot of rain this year forest is looking really good I'm also realizing this year at least in northern New England the trees are starting to drop their leaves starting to get the fall colors early usually when you have a wet year those are the prettiest years for fall foliage wasn't the best last year although I wasn't around last year I was out on my western trip but this year I think it's going to be early. I'm already seeing a lot of colorful trees and it's only August. So I think it will be an early foliage season. 
This year is also colder than normal. I think winter might strike really hard this year, potentially even early this year. It's a beautiful trail. Can't wait until we get up into the flat spots to show you guys. There's always interesting things to see in the forest. This tree years ago, it fell over completely. Maybe it was cut out of the way of the trail, but it started just growing from the fallen tree. Look at this tree that must have fallen down during a storm. It's been down for a while based on these cuts, maybe even up to two years. I guess this was deemed a little bit too dangerous for the ranger to, to touch, probably waiting for it to fall down the rest of the way. Right here we got a nice little trickling stream. Last year when I was up here, none of these little trickles were even going. It's good to see all the water around here flowing. Right there, like 50 feet away, not even. Look at this. That little stream just comes right out of the ground and a frog just hopped in. Look at that. You can see water here, sometimes floods. You can see how everything is moved around and the ground is bunched up. But all that water is just coming out of the ground there. It's really cool to see. This looks like it was meant to be a bench a while back. Very, very rotten at this point. Right now we're walking through a very muddy section of trail. And now we have some nice steps. A lot of times when I go hiking, I'll bring my rubber boots. But I didn't bring them today. This year I haven't been wearing them as much as I had in previous years. In previous years, the hair on my legs wouldn't grow down that far because the boot was always rubbing against it. Not this year, I just haven't been wearing them as much. I would say well over 90% of people on this trail are doing it in the counterclockwise direction like I am. Only because that sign at the bottom Every arrow is pointing this way. None of them are actually pointing the other way, saying you can do the loop that way. But you can. I've never done it in the reverse direction though. I feel like this way would be easier, going up those flat rock faces that will come across, especially if it's wet. That's the reason two years ago when I made the video of Mount Washington's Huntington Ravine, arguably their most dangerous trail. I went up it, but it started raining, so I didn't come back down, because just going up, my feet were slipping on that rock face. Didn't want to do it on the way down. Beautiful little water crossings everywhere. We are starting to gain elevation fast right now. This is the part of the hike. Now I'm starting to sweat. I feel it underneath my backpack. I got a lot of sweat going on. And this is when I'm starting to huff and puff a little bit. But I always get my second wind, then I feel like I can go on forever. I love all the little water features on the trail. If you're someone who likes lots of water crossings and wet trails, I would say the Amanusik Ravine Trail on Mount Washington would probably be the best for that. These are some beautiful steps. Imagine all the time it must take for them to build these steps on these trails so neatly with just rocks they got out here and look at this got an area for all the water to go through without eroding the trail it looks like we got a brand new sign it's not even finished i always thought they would finish them before they bring them out usually they spray paint white and then they go over it with brown paint with a roller so it stays white in the letter holes. That rock is so big. 
think we got more water trickling than a few weeks ago. Here's some really weird fungus growing on these trees. <clears throat> I might be allergic to something out here. This whole area for the past 20 minutes of walking smells like something dead and rotting. It's probably something like mushrooms or probably something like that rotting out here. I recently realized in my yard, absolutely everywhere, we have what you call Indian pipes growing everywhere. It's like a parasitic plant that feeds off of others, but it's supposedly super rare, but I got thousands of them coming up this year. It's a weird plant that, and I looked it up, people used to use it as a medicine. Supposedly it's like a painkiller if you eat it. But I'm definitely not trying and I'm not going to encourage anyone to try it. It looks like somebody brought a bicycle through here or something similar. But here we go with the hike. Now we're starting to be in this area. It looks like a massive sidewalk. I thought this was pretty cool. The other day I researched a lot on that strange plant that I found growing in my yard and it doesn't photosynthesize. That's why it's white. It cannot absorb sun's energy. So it takes it from other plants. With, with a lot of plants, they say it can have a mutual relationship, but they know it's parasitic because I believe the scientists gave surrounding trees and plants a certain antibody, which they later found in the parasitic plant. So it must have taken it from one of its neighbors. Now we're going into a fragile area with rare plants. Pretty soon we're about to get into the open area. Despite today only being like 66 at the bottom of the mountain, it's probably cooler up here, but we're about to get into an area with no shade and it's probably gonna feel pretty hot up here. A couple minutes later, now we're back to an area that looks like a sidewalk. It's all one big piece. So imagine how shallow the soil is around it. This is really cool. I think probably just people walking here all these years is what made it open up like this before humans started walking in this spot that's it was probably all covered up and that's why they're telling everyone not to walk on it anymore and they set up like a barrier here that you're not supposed to cross we're now coming up to our first beautiful scenic view making sure you can read that if you want to pause and see it so here see how it's wet this trail, because it's all slanted, can be pretty slippery. And we will get to a part even dry, you have a little bit of trouble with traction, especially if you have a heavy backpack. All I brought is a couple snacks and two bottles of water. This is very beautiful. It's all one big continuous rock. This is very beautiful. Look at all the little gardens and stuff they have set up here. This is very beautiful. So now we're about to go through here, hike up on that hump there, down, and we'll walk across that entire flat cliff right there. So I'd say we're almost a quarter of the way into it. Now up here, you just follow the paint and it shows you exactly where to go. If you hike in the winter, there are supposed to be what they call corns, piles of stones that are visible when there's heavy snow. And up here with the wind, snow doesn't usually accumulate that high. 
so they usually don't get buried. That's how it is on the taller mountains. Let's see, does this trail even have corns? I think I seen them last time I was here. Now we're going through a pretty muddy area. It's definitely wetter than it was a couple weeks ago on this mountain. Today, everything to me seems so gorgeous because I haven't seen blue sky like that in months. I'm not even joking. We've had a couple days with blue sky, but hazy blue sky. The smoke is finally gone for now. Got a nice shady area under this oak tree. Lots of nice areas to take breaks. Here's an area that might become a little slippery when it's wet, but not the worst yet. Beautiful. Fall is coming. My face is starting to turn very red. I might take my first break here in this little shady patch. Starting to get a bit steeper now. And now that we're starting to get pretty high up, got a pretty good view. I guess there is still some smoke after all. Maybe you guys now can see how I think this mountain is unique and why I like it so much. This right here is one of the steepest spots. I don't know, maybe 45 degree angle or something. Look at it. Look at the trees in the background, they're straight. I'm not tilting the camera or anything. Last time I was here, I thought this worn out spot was people walking, maybe wearing down all the lichen and stuff. So if you look close, it's actually green. But I'm thinking this is not people because that's not people. It just disappears into the woods. Surprised today it's not doing it. There was water running there last time. You can see how it's like a little bowl. It's water that makes these marks, not people walking. There's a lot of slime baking in the sun. You can tell water goes there a lot. Wow, this is a good view. Look down here. That's the place I said looked like a little garden. Look at that. A lot of pine cones this year with all the rain. It's a welcome sight. Most of the trees didn't produce seeds last year. Too dry. And now we're going back into the tree line. It's so nice to get back into the shade. Out there, it's like walking on pavement. It really conducts the sun. Someone made a little trail for another view. And right here, we go up onto another big slab. Now we're about to go up a much steeper section of the trail. Up here it's interesting to see all the same types of trees grow up here as where I live. But like this white pine tree here, it just grows a little like ball. It looks incomplete, but it's the elevation it grows at. So it grows extremely s slow. The trees up here are way older than you would expect them to be. Like, I have a white pine tree in my yard this year. Instead of growing a little ball, each part grew like two feet. It might also be a lack of rain. Like, not rain, but the, there's not enough soil for it to retain enough moisture to grow so much. So just sitting up here in the shade, took like a couple minute break. Let my heart slow down a little bit, and now we're going back up. You can regain so much energy just by a couple minute break. 
Right here's a spot that I like to take my arms and just pull myself up and out. There's a big crevice. And if I remember correctly, we gotta walk through a big crevice coming up. Well, yes, it is a crevice, but not the one I was thinking of. And look at that tree. Just like the one I showed at the beginning of the video. It fell over, broke, and it started growing straight again. All right, this is what I was thinking of right here. I was only maybe 40 feet off. I like this part of the trail. You gotta squeeze through this tight crevice. We've reached another large flat area. Might be one of the last huge ones. Somebody had to bag their dog's poop for some reason. Should have just left the poop there instead of leaving the whole bag there. Look at all these deep crevices in the rocks from years, years, thousands of years of water trickling through here. Or maybe even giant scrapes from glaciers. Look at this part of the trail, that looks so cool. Now that we're starting to get high up, there's a beautiful breeze. Lots of blueberries still up here growing, ready to pick. Trees don't get very tall this far up. This mountain's only about 2,700 feet while. Usually the trees don't stop growing until about 4,000 feet in this area. It appears the mountain was blocking most of the wind. Now that we got up on top of the first part, there's wind and it feels so good. Nice and refreshing. So now the trail's gonna take us down, up onto that, and all the way down to the cliffs, back to the parking lot. So, we're just about halfway. I love this wind. I hope it keeps doing this. But once I get down in there, that's probably gonna block me until I get back up top. I hope you can hear what I'm saying. Right now I got a steep descent back down into the tree line for a bit. And we'll come back up over there. See, it's a very nice trail and for the most part, it's basically one piece of rock going down here. Got a really pretty tree here. A lot of roots. The wind is mostly blocked right now, but we got some nice shade. I think in a few weeks I might try to do the mountain Lafayette. It's got some pretty cool foundations and stuff abandoned at the top from old buildings and fire towers, which they no longer use. Almost every mountain up here honestly has the foundations of a fire tower somewhere. You can find them everywhere. They're usually just four giant blocks of concrete with bolts sticking out where they removed the metal tower with the hut at the top of it. A few of the mountains still have them. Some you can even go inside. They've made them into observation towers. They probably should have done that to all of them, but I don't think they had the idea of making all the trails way back then when they removed them. Some of the mountains still have the scars you can hike up from the old roads going to those towers since it's so difficult for anything to recover at these elevations. Since this is the only corn I found, I'm guessing it's not really meant to be a trail marker, but maybe the rangers just through all the rocks here to clean the trails up. Look what I just walked down. That looks so pretty. It looks like stairs what I just walked down. So it looks like the trail just continues through here. The wind is completely gone now that we're down here. Now we're about to start climbing up again. All right, everyone. I just took advantage of the last shady spot before we get up on this cliff I was pointing out from the other mountain top right over there. Look at this rock right here. It looks like someday this thing's gonna slide, especially with everyone grabbing it to get up here. 
It looks like it could slide pretty easily. Just taking a couple minute break does a lot. Look at that little cave. There's where we were. Now we're on the highest spot. And we're about to start walking along that big cliff. And I'd say time-wise, we're definitely more than halfway. And the good news is, most of it's downhill from now. Back into the tree line for a bit. And we'll come back out onto a big cliff. Now this part of the trail has corns all along it for the winter. In the winter you should be able to know where that trail is, especially because you can see the uh, blazes on the trees. Those won't get covered up with snow in here. There's enough wind that snow really won't accumulate. And even when you're up in these areas where the ground is very fragile, when it's all covered with snow, you're allowed to hike wherever you want. Just like if you go on any of the taller mountains, it says you gotta stay on the trail when you're in the alpine zone. But in the winter, it's all covered up. So, in, on most mountains anyways, those rules don't apply in the winter. Now we're on to a nice damp part of the trail. I think what, what, I, what I was just walking on was all the giant cliffs we were able to see. Look, from all the way back here, look at the road way down there. I think that's the highway. I think 93 in New Hampshire. Yep, there's where we were at first. The higher peak, these are definitely all the cliffs that we were seeing. And that means I'd say we're probably about three quarters done with the hike as now as soon as we get back down into the more heavily wooded forest it goes pretty fast down to the parking lot and this trail one thing about it is if you want to see your progress along it you got a signal everywhere you can just look at the map see how close you're getting the only part of the trail that doesn't have a signal is what we're about to enter Got some mosquito larvae in these little pockets everywhere. And this is a pretty steep spot. If you look right over here, that's the area that looks like little gardens where we started. It's just a big old loop. Look at the texture of this tree. Feels really weird. Now we're in a nice wooded area and it should be like this for the majority of the way back down. Still maybe got, I think I can get back down within the next 25 minutes. Just like on the way up, we got a lot of beautiful stairs coming back on the other side. Just found a snake. Earlier in the video, I showed something similar to this, but this is a really big growth. I'm not sure if it's a mushroom or something else, but this is covered in little tiny flies, if you can see. 
And there must be so many of these out in the woods. That's what I've been smelling on this hike. It makes the area kind of stink. Whatever that is. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm pretty sure this used to be a road. Either going to a fire tower, or maybe just for logging. See how it's very flat right here? This looks like a road to me. And it might be right up ahead, we're about to connect with a trail that you can tell is a... It used to be a road of some type. Now this part of the trail is becoming very gradual. We're only about 10 minutes out from the parking lot. That guy was going so fast, I couldn't even pull the camera out to show it. Oh, here we go. Thank you. There's the road. We're closer than I thought. So that thing I, right there I saw, that might actually connect to that or be part of it. Yeah, so we're closer than I thought. We'll be back at the parking lot in like three minutes parking lots right down here see right here see how it says the loop the other sign doesn't mention that you can do the loop backwards I feel like it should and some sort of old foundation used to be a shack or something here along this road So this road, over the many years of it being a hiking trail, not being maintained as a road, it's become very aggressive now. You could probably still drive something like a Jeep up here, but other than that, not anymore. And we've made our way back to the parking lot. All right, everyone. That was a pretty good hike today. We accomplished that in about... Um, Two and a half hours today. Just getting something to drink and we're gonna be out of here. I hope today's video was interesting everybody. Thanks for watching and have a great day. on the windshield just from people driving by over the past couple hours. You know, a lot of times in videos recently, people are asking why I keep driving so fast on certain roads. I think it's because I never showed you guys up until a few months ago the hood of the vehicle. Because right now I'm driving exactly 30 miles an hour. I think it's because you can see the trees quickly going by the hood on these narrow roads. Because right now I'm going exactly 30 miles an hour and like when I didn't show the hood back in the day, look how slow it seems like I'm going because I was used to be zoomed in where the hood didn't get in the way in many of my older videos. Most people said to leave the hood in because they like to be able to see it because it shows how bumpy most of the horrible roads I'm on. See the trees, how fast they're going by just because they're so close to the hood because the hood is longer on this vehicle too. But when you're out, there's nothing to compare it to going by and I think that's why it seems like I'm going so fast. I'm going 30 right now and I'm still going 30 miles an hour right now. I think that's all it is, is an optical illusion with the hood. Because I've been getting a lot of comments about that. I'm driving too fast, but I think it's just because the roads are narrow. Alrighty, so. I'm just wondering in the comments what you guys think of this type of video. I don't think I've made a hiking video in a while. It's been over a year, I think used to do a lot of them on my other channel. I'm thinking about on my vlog channel. I have a second channel just for vlogs and talking about certain things. I'm thinking about on that channel I might just make some continuous videos of certain hikes. 
This guy really has to pull out going so slow. This area enough to know my way back so I am gonna need the GPS this is not even the same way I came in but I know the last time I came here two weeks ago this is definitely definitely the way I left I think this is the road that the Hobo Railroad is on in New Hampshire a place for train rides I do think that's what I'm heading into Today's video is interesting, everybody. Thanks for watching and have a great day.